about uh, collaborative maintenance uh, in orphan packages and uh, especially by external com contrib contributors. Uh, actually, uh, Rafael uh, ha had a discussion with uh, an external contribu contributor at uh, the LSM this year in uh, Dijon, and uh, this discussion led to, uh, to some proposals which were uh, posted uh, on the mailing list. And here is a summary of what, uh, uh, it, it, what is intended to be done and uh, it is presented here in order to have some feedbacks from, from you and uh, advices and, and uh, if it's a bad idea, corrections. Uh, and some help. <laughs> so, uh, as we are uh, going to present, to present uh, the current uh, life cycle of, of, a, of an orphan package uh, to present what can be done better and then to explain our proposal and to conclude with uh, some interesting side effects and what's done, what, what remains to, to be done and we will let you ask a question or end comment on what we said. So, uh, what, how, what's the life of, of an orphan package? Uh, maintain or orphans the package or some another developer orphans it for him. Uh, the QA group maintains it or not. Uh, and many, uh, many, there, there are contributed that uh, some make patches in the BTS and sometimes those patches stand there for many weeks, months, years. Uh, without uh, any attention. Uh, so the, the QA group is intended to, to apply those patches and upload new versions when necessary, when, uh, when we have to fix bugs or, or things like that. Uh, until the package gets adopted by another maintainer or uh, when it gets removed from the distribution. So here is a Schematic uh, overview uh, of what I just said, and then to let Alex explain to you the, the proposal. So, Mohamed drew up the situation uh, which is currently uh, uh, done with uh, often packages. So, we have here a drawing uh, which shows uh, what you call here nodes. And I will now uh, explain you what we had in mind uh, after all the discussion. Uh, for, for showing you a more proposal in detail. So first of all, what could be better uh, if we look at this situation? First of all, there is not always a, a new Debian maintainer for adopting the package. And maybe this package could be useful for some users. But if this package uh, doesn't attract interest in the community of uh, Debian developers, it may uh, remain alone with no not, uh, interest at all. So that might be a problem. Secondly, uh, external contributors may, the, the only way they have to contribute to the package is to submit a patch in the BTS. Uh, this can lead to have a, a couple of patches uh, sleeping in the BTS for a long time. And uh, the problem is that uh, maybe you can have a user interested in an orphan package. There are patches in the BTS, but he just has to parse the BTS, find the patch, has the knowledge to apply the patch in the source package, build the package, and then he has the package he wants with the patches. That's really a, a, hard, a hard way for user. And uh, finally, there might be uh, volunteers outside of the event wanting to give a hand, but which who don't uh, doesn't want to go through there because it's a really uh, a particular uh, a trouble to go through there. <laughs> <laughs> no. Don't be so afraid. I think you will like the global idea. So you can see the whole picture. <laughs> New maintainer. Here is the global idea in India. First of all, we thought that it was a good idea to welcome external contributions. 
So that's why we are talking with you today. So the first ID is subversion in the middle. Uh, you, you will see in detail how we want to do that. Uh, having subversion in the middle means that we have to automatically, uh, automatically uh, inject the source packages of our fund in this repository. If not, it would be uh, a pain to manually inject a package in uh, subversion and start from there. So we, we think that we need a, a, a transparent router which could be run by Chrome or something like that. Uh, this wrapper this, uh, is written yet. There is a prototype written already, already written. And uh, I will uh, explain to you what uh, it can do later in this talk. Uh, then we want to allow commits in the subversion for a particular package in the repository to external contributors. So uh, instead of submitting a, a patch and waiting, praying, uh, the external contributor could be uh, incorrect to submit a patch into BTS and to commit it in the repository. Then uh, enters in the game the QA group. Uh, its role is to review patches uh, done by external contributors. And uh, if that's okay, it can use a very package or something to, to build the new package. And then we, we have divided the work. And uh, it's not uh, only to go into the PTS for reviewing patches manually, but to just uh, perform an SVNF and build patches. Can you just uh, say something? What is said here is already true. We can already review patches in the BTS and apply them for our use. We're not doing it, but the whole goal of this project is to provide tools that enable us and the QR members to do this more easily. To have tools ready to check uh, the diffs between the actual uh, version, which is the version, the last version that was deployed in Unstable, so that we can check the work that has been done and uh, things like that. And that's why we're trying to have uh, something centralized as well as coherent. So, uh, what's, what's better with this proposal? Uh, first of all, uh, we, uh, we spoke about users who might be interested in contributing to the package, but who really don't have the time or don't want to go through them. With this situation, they might have a SVM access to the package they want to contribute to. And then, uh, we don't have to, to find someone interested in the Debian community for enhancing the shape of this package. First of all, that, can, that, uh, that may attract new contributors to our fund package because it's not again. Uh, it may be something uh, which could be a new, a new gate to the DVM. Yeah. That, that's the idea of, uh, of Mark, really. Yes. Uh, hmm? It could be the idea of Mark, you, you want to do task-based task things to do maintainer. Uh, those yeah. do not want to be new maintainers, but maybe they will after some time yeah. when they get used to, to the work and they think it's not so difficult. I'm going to stop that. Okay. And then, uh, as uh, Rafael said it before, uh, we believe it will uh, enhance and simplify the work of the QA because there will be uh, an RCS, in fact, in the, in the center of the work uh, of orphan applications. Just to give an ex example, uh, if we have this central uh, subversion repository, uh, we can generate our web pages with the list of packages which have changed because someone external. Uh, commit something so we can directly see. Oh, yes, we could review with us, upload it from them, and it would be easier than uh, having to mail everyone or finding a sponsor or things like that. And that's why it could be even broader than the, than the offering package 
it's, uh, it will be a set of tools that we, we want to use for often packages at the beginning. But maybe uh, people doing team maintenance, like uh, PKG Dash Gnome, they're maintaining many packages uh, in the same way, really. Uh, and they could use that to benefit from the works that we would make. Yes. Yeah. Um, <coughs> one thing I. Yeah. Um, one thing, the, the problem uh, I have with this uh, whole proposal, and we have discussed this uh, also on the mailing list already, um, if I, if I uh, do a QA uploads, this is uh, mostly, um, oh, I have here a few hours and let's do some work, and I just get the source packages, apply some patches, or make some changes, and uh, we upload them. And especially, I don't care about the history of the package. I don't care about versions and when was this patch applied. This is, uh, and um, I just fetch the source package, re-upload it, and delete the whole stuff again. Yeah? So um, what I would like to see, if you make a wrapper, like uh, yeah, the source package gets automatically added to the um, repository, what, what uh, I would like uh, to see would uh, that also, you, um, if there is a package that is uh, ready, yeah. ready for upload, yeah, make, a, make a automatically a new source package out of it, so that I don't have to care about the SVN, I just get the source package and upload that. So that, that uh, you make just, uh, I can uh, add a new dev source line to my app sources, and I uh, see, oh, there's a package ready, I up get sourced, I make it diff with the old one and I upload it. I, I don't want to use the whole subversion thing for it because it's, I have to think about uh, how was the URL and uh, yeah, that's, that's and now why, I have to export it to, and... <laughs> that's why you want to write some script in the light dev script really uh, with a new tool color name or I don't know what it would name but which would uh, basically hide all the, the URL yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, you're, right, you're right that uh, we have the problem also when you introduce such an infrastructure that uh, uh, you can't want, uh, make it a habit for everyone in one day. So uh, we will have a system that will fetch new uh, uploads that were done in that stable without, uh, without going through the version. We would reintegrate it. So yeah. we could work on something like you. Yeah. You can put in a commit, commit hook that then does export from this VM. And then stores the, the file in the on the yeah. 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 Uh, directory. Yeah. 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 Essentially, my point is make it as easy as possible uh, for uh, people that just do some QA uploads at one time in a month and don't want to have to remember anything yeah. about it. That's, <laughs> that's, that's the essential that, that point. That's the really, really, really <laughs> same situation for you. Uh, I, I get tons of sponsor requests, but I don't. I can't afford that, so uh, because uh, if I accept one, I will have to accept the second one, and the next one it becomes the official sponsor. And, and I, they do not have enough time for that. But if I can effectively sponsor someone uh, once a month or, or several person once a month, uh, I would do that when, when I have time. An important point that was raised yesterday is if you do a sponsor upload, you are effectively responsible for every change that was made. Yeah. In that upload. That was in the context uh, of non material uploads. I mean, yeah, but it's, it's exactly the same for it's packages it's that, it's are that are including in, 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 in that are not met yeah. The advantage yeah. is you don't have to subscribe to the PTS because all the bugs against orphan package already go to one address, so you <laughs> only to subscribe to one. So that's. Uh, well, yeah. but 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 there's, case, there's, there's one other thing I would like to, to mention. Isn't there a risk that you will. Um, Blindly approved Yes, that you will not check as well a patch and what effects it has, and if there are maybe dependency changes that an external guy uh, overlooked. Uh, a, a point to see is okay. Speaking of packages which have very low impact, I mean, it's a, we have packages which are broken, but nobody noticed because not many people are using them. Yeah. Uh, so in that case, since the very few people which are using them want to contribute a bit, I think we can trust them for this specific package. I, I doesn't mean we don't have to review, that's not true. Uh -huh. We have to review, that's why we will provide tools to make it easy. We don't want to introduce loopholes into yeah, yeah, in the 
this way, right? Yeah. No. Uh, Definitely not. Mm -hmm. No. Um, we uh, don't want to introduce new tools. Yeah. But uh, we, we want to continue to support tools which we are already integrated this way. Well, I mean, well, as long as we have a few users for that. So, uh, I have two problems with this proposal. And uh, the first one is relatively simple. simple. If I go to a website, pick a package that was like fixed in the last two weeks, and do a diff and then upload, I don't use it. I can't see if there are some uh, broken changes, and yeah. I don't but understand. It's not a new problem. That's, that's it's not a new mean. problem, but normally sponsors are usually people who are interested in the package. Or at least they yeah, should but, be. But, but that's, and, that's uh, the problem of this, QA uploads in general, yeah, and not yeah, with the proposal at all. It's a QA upload problem, sure, but it makes uh, the problem worse because you're not doing the changes yourself. <coughs> so you have another person doing changes, you have to understand what he wanted to do, or she wanted to do, and you have to check everything and have no idea what you are doing. It's completely... Yeah, but it's, it's not... So, uh, so many yeah, ways you can make that, software. Like, what have to do with it? I, I, would, I would see this as a, as a huge proposal if, for example, uh, a patch that is uploaded by a developer and it's signed in the VTS, there, there would be a way that I could compare if that patch has been applied exactly as it was in the VTS in the package, mm. in, the, in the subversion. That would be a way to like, reduce the, the, the risk because a person with the, with the key in the ring has already applied a patch and probably has tested and is working for him. So I could just immediately see that this patch with this change set, which was already put in the right. BTS, is applied immediately. If he's a developer, he would have blocked directly. Yeah, but yeah, maybe but not. Most well, patches in the BTS are not submitted by developers. Yeah, but <laughs> if, if there would be a way that, for example, I go to the BTS and I can review the patches, and then I could have the turbo with, a, with an assurance that exactly the same patches that were in the BTS yeah. were applied to this but, package. But because if not, I have to do all the all the work backwards. I have to take the package, take the previous one, have a diff, and then review the diff. Um, but, so, but why uh, do you check the patches in the VTS in the first place? You don't have to check them. You have only to have to check what you upload. You don't have to check the patches. You can't trust the patches in the VTS because mostly oh. they are not provided by... Yeah, but that's why you have to review them, right? Right? Anyway. But so that's why you have to review them. Yeah, but you have, anyway, you have to check them sometime. And it's no different if you do it with BTS or do it with a diff. Yeah. So, so we, only if there's a patch by a known developer who's working with a package, you could skip that part. But and if you, you have, shouldn't, if really. If you have 10 patches and you have separated in different functionality or yeah, different okay. problems, that would be a good so idea. It's much, it's much easier to go through the BTS, check this patch, solve this, okay, it's okay. applied exactly in the same way, yes. And you yeah. don't have to open the tarball but, every but day. But that's the problem with, uh, with subversion and not. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. yeah, probably subversion is not the best choice for this. Because subversion, uh, you have, uh, subversion is not a decentralized tool. And uh, in this case, we have to count on people who are doing like uh, four people are joining together to maintain one package. And it could be a good idea to not use subversion, but one of the mo more modern systems like mm -hmm. Darks or. But, or whatever. We don't have a point. We're not going to do that discussion. I won't even tell you that SVK exists. I don't know if it's SVK. which is a wrap distributed. And a pay sometimes too. Anyway, Dato is a bad boom. I have a couple of concerns with this proposal. One of them is that uh, it may lead to people having commit access to, to this repository to somehow uh, lose responsibility about their changes. I mean, if you just co say, I commit, and somebody will take and will load, and if it introduces books, well, they will take care of them or something. When a person has an interest in a package and he intends to adopt it, he prepares the package, builds it, makes sure it works well, he puts his name in the maintenance field, will yeah. handle bugs and all that stuff. I don't know why are we making an exception for this, uh, for this uh, package, why they can be uh, prepared without nobody caring for them. That's I mean, it's not my problem. Problem. I have no problem to, to, to put the name of the external maintainer in the maintainer field. The, the, so that, or or I think to make sure that they are subscribed to the PDF so that they get books. I mean, 
Though the external contributors are, 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 are supposed to, uh, to have the interest in the package. Right. Right. Yeah, but so is that package? necessary for a person to become a developer just to maintain a package? No, yeah. he could he just not just. He could 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 you would see that uh, really? they are afraid to go to the new maintainer. Maybe, maybe and they, 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 no, they are knowledge people. I mean, just a quick example, or maybe we can continue yeah, because we have an example to show you. And then we, we can discuss. Okay, because, uh, okay. Uh, okay. 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 I got the answer. So, uh, this is a quick show of the, how we see the SVM repository. Basically, it's divided in three sections. Uh, the first one, all front, is a section where packages are automatically injected uh, in the repository. And if we have an external contributor who comes and who wants to contribute to the package, we will move the package from all front to excellent. And we add the idea with Raphael that uh, maybe if this is external contributor, after the time it seems to Go through an end and uh, look for a sponsor and so on, and then. Well, you can have sponsors without going through an end. It's not needed to become a developer to just upload a package. I mean, it's a completely complete misunderstanding. You don't need a developer account to maintain packages. It's not needed. Yeah, you know, there are so many people. There are so many people who say. I don't say that. Yeah. I'll bet some some developers will say, I won't sponsor if you don't plan on becoming that. Yeah, but there are so many people who just become a developer for one package, and it's not needed. It creates security risks. Adds to the load. We need to maintain a team. Your point is clear. I I want to be an administrator, and I create dozens of of group projects for. Only a subversion repository. And if we have a subversion repository with many good tools to work with subversion, I we could at least offer the service to usual Debian maintainers as well. That's yeah. why there's the dead bank part. Not yeah, that's okay. Not okay. <laughs> not okay. I think we are talking about two different topics here. One is what can we do to get more people to work on orphan packages? And this will most likely be one-time contribution. That's the point uh, Dato somehow mentioned. If they are going to actually maintain the package, it's no longer often. So that's a different uh, topic. They will put their uh, name in the maintainer field and so on, and they will get a sponsor and so on. And the other topic is um, how to make sponsoring or maintaining easier. And that's what Subversion or any other revision control system is for. And we should decide now what, which topic that we are talking about. I don't want to discuss SVN build package now. I do want to discuss how um, sponsoring is made easier, both for uh, often packages where I just get one-time contribution and the general. Uh, in the general case. Yeah, that's, that's the important part of all of those. Yeah, but, uh, but, but we are talking about technical details, which we really matter really now. But we are constantly to... mixing these two topics, uh, like uh, um, organizing sponsoring and organizing QA upload. Right. And uh, some people here, at least me, have very different opinions on this both path. Uh, I find it a very good idea to offer these tools for sponsoring. But there are some areas where you have to handle the packages uh, in, the, in, uh, in another way when they are really often and the contributor doesn't want to be listed as a maintainer. Uh, these are two cases and they have their differences and uh, you need sometimes to apply different policies for these both cases. I think I we think should let them just... Um, well, let me do one remark. I think the main difference between Orphan packages that don't have maintainer and packages that are being sponsored is that for orphan packages there is really a minimal maintenance policy. Yeah? Only uh, release critical bugs are in general fixed. You don't do new upstream releases, you don't do minor bug fixes. If you want that out. You, you want to keep the package yes, stable you, as it is. Say that, uh, you can find someone in the world who is not in the Debian world, who knows yeah, this software, who wants to 
patch it, but he doesn't have the time, he doesn't want to become a Debian developer. This no, proposal is also for providing a way to accept yes. his help. But then I you know, no, you know, no, 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 in a change of state, yeah. the, the package is then no longer orphaned, it is being externally maintained, but that person is the maintainer at that point. Right. But he's not right. a Debian developer, so, so you it's the maintainer. So this right. is we, we, we do all agree, but we have problems with the world. Yeah. I but mean, that's really what we, we told you. The external managed part was for package which are not often anymore because we found people to yeah. keep them in a good state. But since they are not Debian developers, we have to solve the problem of uploads. And because sponsors are difficult to find, we need to have a system which makes it easy topic. for other developers to work and make the work. I think you should finish presenting your proposal and then okay. maybe we have time for discussion, but yeah. So we will go quickly. So this is uh, the script that will automatically inject packages in the SPAN uh, machine. So it's, it's really simple. It uh, will fetch the source.gz uh, file from the archive and uh, we'll uh, look which package it doesn't already have in the submachine and if it doesn't care, it will use SVN inject. It can be run directly for using, importing only one given package or it can be run uh, by run on the default way. This script is already written and it works. Uh, so, we, I think we already said all that, but this is a quote. Uh, that's our so, definition of it. Okay, so who are external contributors to us? They are users of our fans package. They know how to patch it. They'd like to contribute to that Debian package, but they don't want to go through a name and they don't want the package to be removed. So this is the final uh, drawing which you should compare with the first one. This is what we have in mind, in fact. So you see it, SVM in the middle. So uh, the external maintainers are here and they will come in here. Uh, our ship to SVM will grab packages from here and put them here. And then the QA will work is to go there and there. And eventually we have a The point was already mentioned here in the, in the trouble, um, but um, I think um, if you want to go uh, on with this proposal, you should uh, you should uh, replace this uh, QA group thing there yes. with uh, with something more broad. Um, essentially, you should also, especially if you want uh, the people to really maintain uh, the packages over a time and to, to care for them, you should uh, also um, include uh, Debian mentors and uh, mailing lists like that and people that are there. Uh, it's not only QA related, yes, yeah, uh, not only the QA group should uh, should be uh, involved, but uh, it's essentially, case. especially the main mentor should uh, you should propose there too and ask for people that want to do it there too because as they said, there's there are also a lot of people that don't do QA plus but they do sponsoring very often and they will of course yes. and also you should move the orphan packages away. That's that's where you get them from. But as soon as you take them and they get to be maintained in this way. They're not really orphaned anymore. Right. And I see. That, that, that's, that's, that, that, that's important because you don't want unrestricted changes to orphan packages. Mm -hmm. Right, I think this has caused some bit of misunderstanding. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's uh, some harm in having orphan packages in a repository as well. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Two, two, uh, three branches, uh, one, one of which is orphan. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's as zero as as in, uh, between branches. Yeah. So if the, main, the external maintainer uh, stops working on the package, you have to open it again. Yeah, sure. Uh, right. And uh, moving uh, out of the repository. Yeah, right. The point is that the point is that the orphan branch should receive very few commits because as soon as you detect a person interested in a package, you should be encouraging yeah. to adopt it. Yeah. 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 Right. Yeah. Of course. Uh, one thing about the ACL is that going to be per package? We will have that in mind. No, uh, so, so, so I don't have the exact technical details yet, but my idea was to, uh, uh, since we're using IOS uh, <coughs> project and uh, all people are the same group, 
uh, we need to go a bit further to protect the, the, the comics right. So I wanted to write a specialized book script and protect these scripts with uh, RCL so that they can't modify the rules. <laughs> and I, I, I will talk with you about that later for another <laughs> 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 like, I, By the way, Franz, uh, you told you you need a package this morning for Lithium. Just pay me and I'll add you uh, admin to the project. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, we can, yeah. so now the proposal uh, is seen, I think. I think. So, this is just a couple of interesting side effects yeah. we saw. Uh, that's a, <coughs> that's, a, that's, that's a, what caused the confusion because we start with the offline package in mind that we broadened our view during the discussion. But uh, we haven't changed the, the world in the way as well. Yes. Um, how much effort are you duplicating from mentors telling it and sponsors telling it? Because this sounds mm -hmm. exactly like what they want to do, plus the original idea of doing something about often packaged, which I really like and don't really find anymore in your group. Uh, I, I know what so mentors think it is, is, but what is the sponsor? It's, it's fairly new, I think. Yeah, it's very new. Yeah, and but, I think that they are working together. So, so maybe you should have to go also. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah. I haven't yeah. looked into it, but only heard of it, and it sounds interesting. I think Ubuntu has some yeah, the idea came, tool. Yeah, the came from there. Um, and this sounds really interesting. It's just, uh, I don't know how it technically works, but you, you get uh, something you might would like to sponsor, it automatically fetches the latest version from Unstable or whatever and produces adaptives and so on and, and so everything you would want to have as a sponsor. So, um, as I see, you are reinventing the wheel here. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad to re reuse or incorporate or uh, work with other people. Uh, but just a matter to know, so send, send us uh, mail with the pointers and we'll uh, check with them. Okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, 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 I think I come back again to the same problem I mentioned before, but I think that it's just not, not reinventing the wheel, but it's also like adding a new step in the middle that won't provide much benefit because when I get a package from here, I will have to again review everything. So I, I will do the same, exactly the same process as downloading the, the source original package and then I find the patches to see that everything applies perfectly and to see what the guy has done. So it's basically from my point of view like going back in time. No, no because we, you have to read, read it for the, for the review, the patch has already been applied, so they can yes, say apply. <laughs> and uh, it, it, I, don't, I don't see how it would be more difficult if you... I don't say it's more difficult, it's just really like adding like something that, that might not end up helping in any way. Um, I think it would help, for instance, um, it would make it easier to submit a patch because uh, you can just submit a patch against the SVN repository. If you don't do that, you have to, if if the package doesn't use the patch or or a patching system, <coughs> you have to extract your diff from from the diff of GZ. Uh, Does this support when you submit it? Um, the full source. Sorry. Does the the version repository import the full source of the package? Yeah. I think it's right now, yes. Uh, it, it uses SVN build package, uh, yes. so yes. that's the point. Um, so if you do any change to the package and uh, want to submit the patch, you just do SVN diff and you're done with it. So it it might is the the thing for, for um, to submit patch. And then you profit of the history also. Uh, that's okay. That I, I don't see uh, the advantage there because uh, it's simply doing apt-get source uh, package name, copy uh, the package directory, do your change and send a diff. It's not no difference to doing s 4 n checkout, doing a diff and then say s 4 n diff. I mean, it's like the same work you have to invest. Mm, well, you, you don't I have do like I would, I would you, you can't yeah. apply uh, patches that are on the BTS and sort, uh, sort them and yeah, well, I, um, I, I would just repeat, I, I mean, I, I maintain all my packages in, in, a, in a version control system and uh, I also maintain all packages that I regularly sponsor in a version control system and the point about this whole thing is that don't 
every sponsor have to in, uh, yeah, make their own uh, repositories of, of, this, uh, of the packages that they sponsor or make their own alias projects for each package that they sponsor but, but uh, that you only... I have created the alias project for where I want to co-maintain uh, a package and uh, where I want to essentially sponsor someone and it could be an alternative to have one huge repository uh, where you have all, all the infrastructure only once and all the sponsors can uh, work on it together. I don't know if this works out uh, and if the sponsors uh, really will do it, but I don't think it's uh, like broken by default. Or, so I think it's uh, worth well, the idea. Could, there, there could be a lot to gain there, but yeah. a, a, a side effect of that is allowing external people to do the uh, commits that you will also have to teach them how to do it properly with yeah. proper commit messages, uh, with, with, with unified uh, commits for one problem, you do a commit, then you work on the next problem, you do a commit, and there should also be a very easy way to say, okay, this is shit, revert all the way back to the current release source. Yeah, that's, that's my concern. Um, uh, and I want to ask the, the, talk the about person it. who worked on that to start again. So I want to talk about my concern like uh, for 20 minutes now. The problem with uh, the fixed repository and the website uh, which is saying which packages have been updated in the last time need to be uploaded is that you have no personal relationship between the sponsor and the person who is doing the maintenance. So you can't go simply and say, uh, hey guy, uh, your package sucks. I mean, you shouldn't do it anyway, but you should say your package, your package sucks because A, B, C, D. And uh, without this personal re relationship, you have a really big problem to educate people to do better. You can't, it's, it's so detached and so uh, complicated to just contact someone you have no experience with and say, okay, I've looked at your package and I would sponsor it if you do that, 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 and blah, blah, blah. We have both, both problems. On the one side, uh, we have many people, knowledge people, we don't need any help, who can't do anything because they have no sponsor. And the other hand, is the problem that you were not telling me us yet. Yeah, but no, um, I'm seeing a lot of persons who are nearly developers, and most but of I, them I, I still... I have you on this concept. Uh, I don't know, we could solve that maybe uh, have a well, kind of user rating, but by no, not, the, not user rating, but I would... The problem of the whole proposal is that you detach sponsories from sponsors. You have like a, a pool. Completely random relationship. You go to the pool, take one package, the person you don't know, and upload it. So you don't have a usual point of contact which you can, uh, where you can ask I know. to do something. That's a problem with the proposal. It's not something you can solve, but it's we one side of the whole proposal. We can try to think about it and yeah, find but, work out. Uh, but the idea of the rating is not so done. But, uh, I mean, uh, when you start, uh, sponsoring new uh, products this way, uh, we could have a, a system where uh, we count how many uploads were sponsored. I mean, the first time uh, we need to make a, a thorough check and uh, uh, give them more advice. But uh, when he did already ten uploads, uh, then we could maybe trust him more, uh, and so we could have some kind of system in this way. Maybe. Yeah. This way maybe well, it um, only solves a part of the problem. I mean, it would be nice to have one big repository to coordinate sponsorship and do better than now because we have one mailing list, Debian Mentors, which is flooded by requests. Most of the packages are simply crap because they are first tries and uh, of people who have no experience and sometimes don't even want to maintain Debian packages but say, I have this project and I want to see it in the main archive but haven't read any Debian documentation. So if we have one common repository, we can say, okay, you can upload your packages, your package source, your package diff there, and we'll provide a form for sponsors to go there and pick a package which they like, and then become a, con uh, become a sponsor for this package for a longer time. We, so we could maybe we have a new section. Yeah, we have no, we have not that at the moment because we have no repository to manage. We have mentors and we have sponsors there. Yeah, but they are not report. They are not uh, version control systems, but simply one yeah. web interface yeah. to find a sponsor and one uh, yeah. very good tag to uh, 
put your packages in. Yeah, but it's, it's, more, it's more like a dating service than. Uh, yeah, yeah. It would, it would be <laughs> nice. Well, it's a plan uh, Martin Michelman uh, I had for a longer time. We wanted, <laughs> we wanted to merge Debian mentors and the yeah. whole new maintainer process for a long time because it, there are many places where this interacts and where we should merge some stuff. And if we create one place for people who want to sponsor, where they can put the packages and receive comments and find a sponsor in a more organized way than now, we could do a lot better than now. But right. yeah. it's, but, uh, but, uh, I don't it's, not, it's not impossible. I mean, we could create a new section uh, which would be the really more called mentoring meeting yeah. or something like that. But no. someone could, could have uh, um, no, in one section we were more trust and the other section we know we have to, to just shape and explain them and um, and people have <laughs> <laughs> the time to, to, to make good advice and do a sovereign check and uh, uh, take more time with the, the external contributor. We work in package um, sections and, and people like your friends or me. Uh, well, what's the rest of the problem? Do we have anything after this? Or? Yeah, there's another part I wanted to do a release talk. Yeah. About yeah, that's important, and that's yeah. not a topic anyway. Yeah. <laughs> 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 that's to do our release instead of our release The uh, the question is, at uh, what what point in this proposal uh, think do you think uh, hinders sponsors from uh, only doing selective packages and uh, only doing them right? As a, don't, I don't I don't. Uh, no, you, you said a, a big repository is good, but this proposal this. Uh, Divides sponsors and sponsors, uh, but I don't see your point. Where, where is the where is the difference? So, or or where, where does it break? Uh, which no. is the important part that you don't? So, so break. the break is not in the tools. The break in his mind is the, the way we described it. And yeah, uh, I have a problem with the description of the project. I like the idea of a common repository for sponsored packages, and I like the idea of a common interface to find a sponsor and to find a package you can sponsor. It's needed because the mailing list we use for that is completely useless at the moment because uh, I don't know, I have like 50 posts a day and it's just too much to follow it. And mostly catch up and don't read most of the posts. And uh, so it's a good idea to have a better way to do it. But uh, it's not exactly a good way to maintain orphan packages by external contributors. It's a good Proposal, but for something different. To get into the sponsored state. Yeah. yeah. It, it's perfect for that, and that's why I also think it would be a bad idea to upload every orphan package by default, because then you will just create a huge repository no, we that. for which 90% is not used and will never change. You should only, only put a package in when there's no interest in it. I think we should really stop now and yeah. continue the discussion somewhere else because other people want to listen to the next talk completely and might have good to go and yeah, okay. yeah, anyway, yeah. we won't finish it anyway. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you.